New where my goal is always to empower you, teach you how to make money, how to survive in this world that we call life. Um, as you guys know, I'm a regular dude. Uh, didn't come from much in life. I uh, grew up in the urban developments, but I learned real quick in life that um, as you get older, you got to make something for yourself. And if you want to make money, you got to go to the money. The money's not going to come to you. Um, in the world that we live now, a lot of people really shouldn't be complaining about, you know, um, that there's no jobs, whatever the case may be. They may not be the highest paying jobs, but there's always a job available. And we're going to talk about different ways that you guys can make extra money. And for some of you, different ways that um, you could just make money, period. Because again, a lot of us are not really realizing that things have changed. Um, and the cost of living is very expensive, very high. As you guys can see behind me, if you're on IG, we, we're about to have the, the federal chairman of the United States of America speak. This is one of the most powerful men in the world, more powerful than the president himself. Because right now, as I, as I told you guys a couple months ago, um, actually a couple years ago too, when uh, um, Biden became president, that interest rates were going to go up because of, of course, quantitative easing. Um, let me just clarify what is quantitative easing. That's when you put a whole bunch of money in the, into the economy. For, for a lot of you that may not understand economics, that is not a good thing. What happens is when there's low interest rates and there's a lot of dollars, a lot of supply of dollars in the economy, we're going to come into a world of inflation, which is happening right now, meaning that the cost of living is very expensive. Everything has gone up to meat. As you guys can see, gas price because of the war, um, home prices are to the roof. Everything that, of course, you need to be able to survive in this world has gone up at least by five to 35 percent higher. And in order to stabilize our economy on a macro level, in order to do that, you have to be able to increase interest rates. And it's just it's not just a one time increase for a lot of you uh, individuals that's asked and have been DMing me. Should I buy a home? This is going to be uh, my best answer to you. My opinion this is the worst time to buy a home. You're buying it at the highest price and interest rates are have already gone up, meaning interest rates was, let's say, two years ago at two point seven five percent. Interest rates right now is at 5.5%. The moment Jerome Powell speaks, which he's about to get on this podium in about three minutes. The, actually, he's already speaking. Jerome Powell is actually speaking right now. Right now, interest rates are already at 5.5 from 2.75 roughly two years ago. Really listen now. Interest rates two years ago was 2.75. Within a four-month stretch, we're already at 5.5% as an interest rate. Right now, Jerome Powell, the federal, federal chairman of the United States of America, is currently speaking, as you guys can see behind me, and he's, of course, about to most likely increase interest rates 0.50 basis points again. What that means is, as he continuously increase interest rates, eventually home prices are going to have to go down because money is unaffordable at this point, meaning if you're about to go to the bank to buy a home, it is going to cost you too much money to get the loan that you was about to get two years ago. Put it like this, roughly anywhere from $800 to $1,800 more is costing you to get the same loan you were getting two years ago because of the interest rates continuously increasing. Now, the reason that the interest rates have to continuously increase is because we need to stabilize the market. There is a big inflation going on, people. The price of everything has gone to the ceiling, down to fish, down to meat, down to just domestic products. We have supply issues. There is a whole economical issue going on right now, and we look like we could be going into a crash. I've been talking about this for five years, people, and I've been talking about the fact that you guys got to prepare yourself for, it, for this particular situation if it crash. If this market crash or pulls back, okay, if the real estate market pulls back by at least 60% due to high interest rates and inflation, a lot of you are, got, are going to have the best opportunity to buy a home at almost a 60 to 70% discount. This, was what, this is the position where I would feel it would be a great time for you to buy. Not right now. Let the market crash. Let the market, even if it don't crash, pull back. Interest rates, if it goes up, most likely based on him speaking right now, I'm not listening because I'm live with you guys. If he incre in in increase interest rates 0.50, we're going to be roughly at 6.25%, 6. maybe 1.5% on the interest rate. Meaning if you go to a bank, okay, compared to two, three years ago, you could have got a loan roughly at 2.75, 3%. You are not getting that loan anymore. You are not going to get that loan anymore. The lowest you will get a loan based on what this guy says the moment he gets off of this podium within the next hour is going to be roughly 5.5% 5 
Maybe if you're lucky, 6.15%, maybe 6.25%. It all depends based on what Jerome Powell says. A lot of you may not know Jerome Powell. He's the federal chairman of the United States of America. One of the most powerful men in the world, more powerful to me, more powerful than the president himself, I'm gonna be honest. Because when this guy speaks, the whole stock market tanks, the crypto market starts readjusting, everything starts readjusting because again, he's the one that controls what we call several different things, monetary policy, fiscal policy, um, interest rates, because the moment he speaks, the whole world moves. Because the banks, they're borrowing based on whatever he says, his rates. Whatever the rate is that they agree on because of the economy on a macro level, based on what he says is how the world moves. Now, as I promised you guys, I, I said I was gonna do it last night, I was a little busy. I got home late from the office. I'm gonna give you guys 10 ways on how to make money, how to make some extra money, right? Because again, right now the cost of living is killing a lot of us. A lot of us, if, you make, if you're making 40 to maybe $65,000 a year and you are trying to, of course, save, it is not easy. Because the cost of living and inflation, I know a lot of you are having a hard time saving, uh, having a hard time, of course, living your life. But here's reality. A lot of you are surviving, which is not what you should be doing when you're 30 years of age, when you're 35 years of age, when you're 40 years of age. You should be living your life. You should not be surviving. And for a lot of you, this is not going to get any easier. It's about to get worse. Now, this may sound crazy. At the end of the day, a lot of you probably have heard of some of the things that I'm going to talk about. Let's first talk about number one. Um, Amazon has uh, implemented something called Flex, which I found very unique. Um, now, if you have a car, and a lot of these things, some of these things require, well, everything here requires a car to a certain degree. Um, so if you're an individual that don't drive, I highly recommend you get a car. Um, if you need to finance the, the, most, the, the least expensive car you can find, whatever, Toyota Corolla, Toyota Camry, whatever the case may be, or you need to have a car to do majority of everything, not everything, but majority of everything on here. Number, number one. Okay, Amazon has implemented something called Flex, which is very dope. I think it's very unique in a lot of aspects. Pretty much, you're getting paid roughly $18 to $25 an hour to pretty much drop off products to people's homes based on you driving your own car. Now, what's funny about this is you pick a route. You pick a route that you actually just want to be in. Okay, well, hypothetically, um, you want to be in this, um, I don't know, Coconut Creek area by theory. And in that area, you're going to now take your car and drop off packages to people's homes in your car. They're paying $25 an hour just for that. No license, no requirement needed. You just need to understand, of course, the route that you're doing and of course dropping off product. They already have a training for that. Simple, it's called Flex. Um, I'm glad to see a lot of people have been doing that to offset the cost of living. And I told you guys from three, four months ago, you better understand, right? <laughs> and I don't like to force people, right? You may wanna understand you gotta go harder than you went last year. Last year, there's a lot of stimulus, there's a lot of PPP, there's a lot of things to benefit a lot of you to hold yourself up. This year, there's none of that, okay? It's not going to happen. So now the question is, how do you hold yourself up? You got to ask yourself, how do I add a different stream of income? And one of them is adding what we call flex with Amazon. People go to Google, just type in flex. If you need extra income, you have a reliable vehicle. This is a very valuable thing that you can do to make extra money. What's beautiful about the app is you can turn it on and off after your route is done. So you can do two, three hours, boom, and then you're off. It's so amazing. So this is a great way to make $25 an hour with no degree. This is amazing. Number two, uh, I want to open you guys, open you guys a little bit, uh, open your minds a little bit differently because a lot of us were still stuck in that old mindset of making money. As you guys know, I'm a consultant. I consult on financial literacy. I consult on starting different businesses, on teaching people how to make money in different businesses. This way, this is something a lot of people don't realize. We're in a world right now, you could consult. If you know how to master something, if you're very good at something, you could make money. You make more money teaching it than actually doing it. A lot of people don't understand that, especially if you have done it already. Okay, people really think about that for a moment. I used to have a car dealership. I used to have a tow truck company. Um, I used to have a tax office. I used to have, um, man, a vending machine company. I, I've done a lot of businesses. So people will pay me just to teach them how to have a successful business that I once had. You're a consultant. People pay me just for financial advice. Me teaching them how to manage their money, how to budget their money. That's a consultant. A lot of you are good at maybe uh, opening up a hair salon. Maybe um, you're a master at um, painting. Maybe you're great at roofing. Maybe you're great at tattoos. Do you know you can make <laughs> just or actually more money just consulting? 
This is the problem with a lot of us. We're still so we're still stuck in this old way of making money. We want to work so hard to make money. So the mindset goes into, okay, it, it, do you want to be an event planner or do you want to consult on event planning because you have done it before? If you understood how life works, the game is working smart, not hard. Why don't you be a consultant, teach people about event planning or teach people how to plan their event and you can make way more money. Example, another way of making money is this. The trucking industry. I know a lot of you are into the whole trucking industry. Te go buy a truck, put yourself in debt, find a worker that drives a truck all day, or teach people how to open up the trucking industry. You teach them, you can make a, in a, in a three hour slot $5,000 just for teaching people how to learn how to do these skills. A lot of you are still stuck on the old ways of making money. The game of life is working smart, not hard. People learn that consulting can make you a lot of money if you understood the value of consulting. If you have mastered something and you're very good at it, all you got to do is learn how to consult, package it and sell it and teach it. That's it. A lot of you are so stuck on the old ways. You don't have to work hard anymore. Work smart. I see a lot of people with the trucking industry. I see a lot of people doing tattoos. I see a lot of people. Uh, let me give you another example. Uh, DJ. People, one of my friends, I told him um, two years ago, two, uh, three years ago, I said, like, dude, you're still DJing. He's like, yeah, 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 I'm still DJing. I said, three, four years ago, I said, why don't you just start teaching people how to DJ? He laughed. He laughed. And then eventually he listened. And then now he's like, Bobby, this is so crazy. I make in two hours $10,000 just teaching people how to become, teaching people how to DJ in two hours. Two, three hours, once a month. He makes $10,000 a month teaching people how to DJ instead of DJing. While some of you are still scratching CDs, scratching, uh, uh, double clicking all night long, three, four hours, at, while this guy's making more money than you, just working smarter. People, at the end of the day, be smart about your movements. If you have mastered something and people want that information, they will pay you for that information. As long as you can patch, package it and teach it to them, you can sell anything. That's why my biggest thing, I see the whole event wedding planning. I get it, people. I get that part. But do you understand how much money you can make just teaching people how to plan their event? Something I thought I'd share. Number three, I want to say Uber Eats. Um, Uber Eats is not the most lucrative way of making money, but uh, I am a big fan of Uber. I have a lot of Uber stocks. I like the fact that, again, you could turn on the app when you want it and turn it off when you don't want it. At the end of the day, Uber Eats is a great way to just make a couple dollars. It's not the craziest amount of money, but again, it's a great way to just make a couple dollars per week. Because some of you, it's not like you need um, $1,000 extra a week. You just need maybe five, 600 bucks a week. And what I'm teaching you, some of these things I'm teaching you can make you a couple hundreds. And some of them can make you thousands per week. Consultant can make you thousands per week. Flex pay can make you maybe say five to seven hundred dollars a week um, doing doing flex, which is, again, simply uh, getting on Amazon, using your car to deliver packages. You can make maybe five to seven hundred dollars. I know a couple of people that's doing that. Um, Instacart has been a, a very popular one in the world of app utilization. Um, a lot of, you know, people are people want convenience. OK, hypothetically, Bobby's home. I want somebody to go grocery shopping for me. What Instacart does is it's just a simple app that lets you go buy groceries for the individual. You get what's on their list. At the end of the day, you bring it, you get paid. And then again, it's important to understand this is very important. People, you want to do areas where people buy groceries in high volume because that's where the money is. A lot of you don't understand that. There's, there's an art to these apps and how these things work and where you want to be. Some of you get into Uber Eats or, or Instacart and you're just anywhere. And then you're working two times as hard while this person is working two times, two times less. Because, again, they thought through the, the, the application to understand what area makes more sense based on age groups, demographics. Really think about this. Next thing I want to talk about, Airbnb. Shout out to Airbnb. My God. Shout out to Airbnb. It's the most amazing company I've ever seen in a long time. As you guys know, the art right now of making money for a lot of big corporations is simply creating an app that connects two people. Us, what's popping? Truck life, what's popping? Us living in the building. Um, for a lot of you, I want you guys to understand the game. The game of life right now is not about owning everything. You need to learn how to control things. A lot of us were so used to being. I want to be a boss. I want to be a boss. I want to be a CEO. You need to learn how to control things. You don't need to own everything. What I like about Airbnb is pretty much think about this. The app, whoever's the CEO, I can't remember his name. Now, imagine this. All they did was create an app that connects people who have a home to people who want to rent a home on a per day basis. 
Now, at the end of the day, they're just a middleman. That's all it is. That's all this app is, is just a brokerage. They're just brokering two different people. They're just, a, and when I was growing up, we didn't call it a brokerage. We would call it a middleman. That's it. These apps makes, make billions of dollars by charging a small service fee for connecting two different people. Angie's List is the same thing. Thumbtack is the same thing. It's just different sectors of where they're targeting their market. That's all it is. But at the end of the day, these apps are making billions of dollars simply putting their self in the middle. Now I see now they have like a barber app. You can book your appointments and you could imagine people eventually might do an app for tattoos. If you want a tattoo app, tattoo artists, you, you could keep going with this, putting yourself in the middle of two different groups of people, people who want to rent and people who, of course, have the product to rent. So you got to really think about this, right? What I like about Airbnb, why there's so many ways to make money in Airbnb right now. It's not just about own, buying and owning a property and renting it out. A lot of you can make money by doing what we call subleasing. You go to the property, you go rent it out, and then you're subleasing it to other people. Because the property would be rented under your name, but you're subleasing it to other people. There's people making six figures a year doing this. A lot of us were still stuck on this mindset, oh, I need to buy a property in order to do Airbnb. No, you do not. If you do your homework, do your due diligence, you could be subleasing Airbnb units to make money. And there's a lot of people doing this. It's all about understanding again, in life you don't need to own everything, you need to control it. I wanna teach you guys that mindset. Get out of that world of thinking that you have to own everything. You need to control it. I make a lot of money doing things that I do by controlling different areas. I don't need to own it, I need to control it. A lot of you are so stuck on owning. I want to be a boss. I want to own this. You don't have to own a house to make money in Airbnb. You need to control the house or the condo or the townhouse to make money in Airbnb. Um, next thing I like is Toro. Shout out to Toro, man. Um, I get it. The whole uh, I see the shining. Um, there, there's, there's two different sides to Toro, right? You, you, you want to be the side that's renting a vehicle that's making money, right? You don't want to be the side that's always renting the vehicle, um, using your money just to borrow a car for one day for $1,500. You want to be the person that's giving the person the car to borrow. Now, here's what's funny about this, right? Hypothetically, I'm just using this as an example, okay? Hypothetically, you got a Lamborghini, right? And your Lamborghini payment is $3,000 a month. Very simple. Very simple math that I'm teaching you guys to just to reset the room where we're learning about 10 different ways on how to make money. Um, we're going to reset the room a little bit. We're talking, we talk about Flex, Amazon Flex, where you get to take your car and drop off packages. You make $25 an hour. Number two, learning how to be a consultant. If you're good at something, it could be good at tattoos. It could be good at um, starting um, a trucking industry, good at doing whatever business that you're good at, starting an ice cream shop, whatever the hell you're good at. At the end of the day, do you know that you can make a lot more money just by teaching people how to do what you're doing if you doing if you could package it? Especially if you're a profitable company, you could prove that you're profitable. A lot of you need to understand how important that is. That's called consulting. I consult on a lot of businesses I've done. I sometimes make six to $10,000 just teaching people how to do a business. While some people go work all month, all two, three months just to make $10,000. It's crazy to me, but again, it's your life. I can't tell you what you do. Work smart, not hard. That's just how I believe, my mind. But again, number three, we all know about Uber Eats. I spoke about that. Uber Eats is a great way to, of course, deliver food uh, for individuals who are uh, probably stuck in their office, uh, probably at home, don't want to leave their house. You pick up food from different locations, you turn the app on, boom, you get paid, and sometimes they give you a tip also. How much can you make roughly an hour? You could probably make $15 an hour, $20 an hour, but again, you also make sure you look at how your, your gas consumption, all that good stuff, and what area you're doing Uber Eats. I spoke about Instacart. Instacart is simply an app that connects you to people who want their groceries brought to their home or their office. Okay? That's simple. And what's great about Instacart is, again, um, it's you could turn on the app when you want it, turn it off when you don't want it. At the end of the day, you want to do it for three hours, you do it for three hours, turn the app off. You want to do it for, but again, it's always based on how much money you're trying to make. If you're trying to make, I don't know, eighty dollars extra for the day, that that could possibly do it for in three hours. You want to make, uh, I don't know, you want to make more, like say six hundred, seven hundred dollars for the week. You might want to do more flex, but again, it requires more driving. Now we also know when we talk. Let me go back to Amazon, which was number one. Amazon Flex. There's also buying a Sprinter truck. That's another way of making money, buying a Sprinter truck and actually becoming a full delivery driver for Amazon. That's another great way if you want to take it to that level, leveraging a truck, a Sprinter truck, picking up packages, you're actually, you own a, you're actually running a full route, not just a short route based on what we call flex. 
Flex is actually using your car. Flex, you're using your car to deliver, deliver packages. You're making roughly about $25 an hour. Totally different. Now, Toro, we're going to go back to Toro, right? We talked about Airbnb. People, at the end of the day, you do not need to own a property to make a lot of money in Airbnb. You can simply lease it or sublease it and play the game the right way, meaning you're going to be the person who the landlord have leased it to, and then you're subleasing it to other people for the three-day stretch, two-day stretch, five-day stretch, whatever the case may be. Um, what else we have? Toro. Now, Toro is a funny one. Toro, you're pretty much on an app that lets you rent out cars. Now, the way it's so profitable, I really want you guys to understand, and again, you got to do your due diligence with anything that I'm talking about, is that Toro is very unique because, example, Bobby, by theory, has a Lamborghini, and the Lamborghini is costing me per month $3,000. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to corner you. I'm giving you guys the game raw and uncut. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to corner Of course, I have to have full coverage. Also, Toro has their insurance that they're going to want you to have based on certain um, cars that you're selling. They're going to want you to take certain pictures of every angle of your car just in case the person damages your car, whatever the case may be, and all that good stuff. But you got to look at it like this. My car payment on my Lambo, by theory, is 3000 a month. If I rent out my car per day at $1,500, and I tell you that uh, in the app, you could actually put that you can't, you have a three day minimum. So now in a three day minimum, I already racked up $4,500. So my car payment is paid just off the first time of me renting my Lamborghini. And if I land, uh, rent it out maybe four or five more times, you could imagine I made for the month maybe $12,000, $10,000 off that one car payment. Now, eventually, a couple months down the line, my car is paid off probably in the first year. And then now it's just free money after the first year. That's how this game works. Now, for a lot of you, there's other cars you could be buying. People are big right now. If you, Because I used to own a car dealership, and I'm going to be honest, um, I still have access to the car dealership business. And Teslas are at high demand right now, electrical vehicles. One car that I know people want and they want it bad is that Corvette and that Tesla. These two cars right now is that the highest demand you could possibly think of. That $100,000 new Corvette and any Tesla, especially the Model S Plaid, Model 3s. People want electrical vehicles and they want them bad because they want to save on gas consumption. I'm going to tell you how bad it is for Teslas. Last week I was on the auction. Um, what auction was it? CarMax auction actually this time. A 2015 Tesla with 220,000 miles went for $33,000. Now, some of you are asking yourself, Bobby, why is that so expensive? That is very expensive for a car that has 220,000 miles. Here's what's funny. Teslas don't have an engine. So miles really have no value when you're talking about electrical vehicle. There's no engine in the car. So there's no maintenance. The only thing really you're going to put on is tires and hope that, of course, the battery is strong. And the support system is strong. That's it. So people are paying so much more for a Tesla. You could imagine on the app what they're willing. Because people want to save on gas. People want to feel the Tesla experience. I know Tesla is one of those experiences that people want on Turo. So people, Turo is a great way to make money. But you got to be different. You got to be smart. You got to get a little bit creative. You got to do your due diligence to realize, okay, if you're going to go into that world, what car is going to bring me the demand I want? Which car holds the great value that doesn't depreciate fast? So, because I'm also telling people when you're in Turo, think about, okay, what car is not going to go down in value too fast? Because you don't want to go get a car, then, okay, this, this year you've been getting $250 a day. Then next year you're getting $130 a day. Do you understand how much of a problem that is? You got to think through your situation. A lot of you are just jumping on these opportunities of life, but you're not thinking through. You got to be creative when you're making money, people. I get it. A lot of us were so used to working hard, putting all our effort into these companies, giving us $10, $15, $20 an hour. We think we made it. At the end of the day, people, you're being used. You have to understand the cost of living is super expensive. Cost of living has gone higher and higher. The question is, how do you offset the cost of living? You need more income. And these are the ways that I'm telling you that you could make extra income. Number, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think I'm on number eight, but I might just keep going. Number eight. <sighs> this is from my personal experience. I'm seeing this. We're in a world where we're always taught to uh, get a new skill, right? And the skill that a lot of us usually hear is what? Insurance. But the insurance that we always hear that we need to sell is what? Life insurance to make money. I'm not for that. I'm going to tell you a higher paying insurance talent that you could have to make you way more money if you're willing to challenge yourself. People, imagine this. Selling insurance 
for high-end assets such as trucks. Selling insurance for high-end assets such as commercial buildings. This is where the money is. Do you understand? If you sell a $50,000, which is small in the commercial world, which is apartment complexes, plazas, being an insurance agent for commercial plazas, being an insurance agent for trucks, because a person buy a truck, they need car insurance for that, that, that big 50 or $100,000 truck they just bought. Guess what's beautiful about this? Guess what's beautiful? The policy might be minimum of a fifty dollars to $100,000 a year policy, and you get how much of that? Maybe 20 or 30%. 30% of 100,000 is what? $30,000. You do three of those, that's 90,000. You do four of those, 30 at four. Come on, that's 120. Come on, baby. What are we talking? What are we talking? And you're doing that from the your comfort of your living room. The comfort of your living room. We got to open up our minds, people. Some of the highest paid clients I have that make minimum 300,000 a year or more, they sell insurance. They sell insurance. They sell insurance, but the insurance they sell is not life insurance, commercial insurance, truck insurance, building insurance. People, insurance is so expensive. Home insurance is all right, but go step it up a notch and challenge yourself, people. Go into commercial insurance. I have clients who make half a million dollars a year, 400,000 a year, 350 a year, working for a company from the comfort of their living room, selling commercial insurance. While some of you are slaving to death, selling life insurance. I'm not against your hustle, but I'm always about working smart, not working hard. Number nine, becoming a realtor. Becoming a realtor, here's, the, here's what I love about real, real estate, right? Just because you got a real estate license, that don't mean you're making money. There is a lot of individuals right now that have a real estate license that can't close a goddamn deal. Because why? It takes personality. It takes stamina. It takes being relatable. People got to love you for you to close deals in real estate. A lot of people go get real estate deals knowing they have no personality, knowing they have no drive, knowing they got no time. You're not closing no deals. You're not going to make no money. But it's also good to understand in this world, why not challenge yourself? That's why I got into commercial real estate. While you have to sell 10 homes to make 100,000 or 10 homes to make 120 because you got to pay your broker a percentage, right? People, the reality is the reality. You sell one building, $5 million, I already made $300,000. One building. I'm helping the person sell a building. I'm helping a person sell a plaza. I'm helping a person sell a hotel. Just work smarter, people, not harder. Challenge yourself. But I know you guys will get the real estate license. The first thing you do is go run to sell houses. And there's nothing wrong with that. But because money is money, right? But if you could work smarter, why not work smarter? Why not get more creative? And the last thing I want to talk about when it comes to making money. This is going to go back to, um, this might go back to more of the fellas, the males, the masculine, masculinity, the urge. Number 10. We got to go back to the traditional days because I'm always rehabbing property. I'm rehabbing a property right now, a couple hours away, and I'm about to buy another one. I'm going to tell you right now, there's certain licenses that still make a lot of money if you understood the value of it. And some of you don't understand if you just got the license, it could even be for women, too, if they just thought about this way, too. Even if you got the license but didn't do the skill, but you have the license, how much money you can make leveraging the right people. I'm going to talk about four different people. A roofer. Roofers are so valuable right now if you understood how powerful a roofer is. Do you know to do one roof, roughly, I don't know, 1,700 square feet, which is a small roof, that's an easy, like $35,000. Easy. By the time you minus material, that person made maybe $22,000 easy on that deal. Profit. Two of those for the month, that's $50,000, $45,000, easy. Just doing a roof, two roofs for the month. What's crazy is I learned through a roofer I, I know, he got licensed as a roofer, but don't do roofs. He hires people to do roofs. So he just went to school just to get the license, just so he could hire somebody, and they all do roofs for him. He don't do no roofs. He said, I never, I never been on a, I never really touched a roof or did a roof before. But this guy makes roughly $2 million a year doing roofs. Do you guys see what's happening? 
We're going to talk about another skill, a labor intensive skill, but has a lot of value that no matter what, no matter how the economy goes, you're going to need this person. These are things that robots can't substitute. A roofer, an electrician, a plumber, a painter. People, these labor intensive skills still make a lot of money. My uncle is a carpenter, okay? When he works on any of my properties or other properties, sometimes on a Saturday I go check him out and go have some fun, go do two, three hours of just holding his tools for him just so I can learn. I go with him on Saturday to learn. This man will make sometimes in, in a, in a six-hour stretch, he already made $12,000 just doing a little woodwork here, boom, a little plumbing here, just doing carpentry work. People, do y'all understand why some of y'all work all month, you can't make $12,000. This man will make five, 6000 in like three hours. Three hours. People, labor-intensive work still makes a lot of money, especially when you're skilled. Carpentry. Plumbing, electrical, there's still six figures you could make or more. And installing ACs, being an AC tech, being an AC contractor. Do you understand how much money is in these fields? And here's what's crazy. Growing up when I was in high school, they had something called dual enrollment where you could actually, if you're in, I think, ninth or 10th grade, you could actually go get this trade for free. Electrician, um, many of these trades here for free while you're in school, dual enrollment. I didn't take the opportunity. I was young minded, being a bad boy, not listening. Right. And now I teach kids, make sure parents make sure you give your child that opportunity and understand the value of dual enrollment. And when you're in high school in ninth or 10th grade and you take dual enrollment, it's free. It's free. A 30 to $40,000 license free for you to make money. And a lot of you don't do it. I'm going to tell you something. Sometimes a plumber comes to your house, especially don't let it. Oh my God. Don't, don't have a plumbing issue at night. I had a plumbing issue maybe a month ago. One of my pipes busted. That's, I guess the pipe is underground, but they're gonna re, they had to reroute it. The guy came for three hours, charged me $7,500. Three hours, $7,500. Here's the funny part about the $7,500. The piping only costs roughly, with material, $150. Because how do I know? I had to go buy it. The other 98% was all labor for his pocket. And he did the job by himself. Plumbing, roofing, carpentry, construction, being a developer. These things are, these licensed skills are so valuable. The problem why a lot of people sometimes struggle in those areas, because they have the skill, but they don't know business. If you have the skill and you learn business, you understand how much money you can make. There should be no reason why nobody in this world say they don't have a job no more. Not with the things I talked about today. Amazon Flex, you're making $25 an hour. Being a consultant, learning how to teach people something you're good at, you could get paid for that. If you, example, you're good at doing tattoos, you don't have to keep doing it. Hold a class, show people how to do tattoos, charge each of them $1,000, 1,000 times 30 people, that's $30,000 you made in three hours. Three hours. You do one show a month, $30,000, 10, 10 months in a year, just warm up, that's $300,000 plus two more months, that's three sixty. dollars Come on, $360,000 just teaching people how to do tattoos. I'm a consultant, I teach people how to open up businesses. Sometimes for me to teach you how to open up a business, to, uh, it's always two packages. If I teach you how to open it or actually physically walk you through it, it's two different prices. Sometimes just for me to teach you, that's $5,000. If I have to actually walk through it, that could be $10,000, $12,000 easy in two days. While some of you work all month, all two months, all three months just to make $15,000, if that. Number four, I talked about Uber Eats. This is just a, couple, a way to make a couple extra hundred bucks. A couple, two, three hundred, four hundred bucks extra a week. You turn on the Uber Eats app, you deliver some food. It is what it is. Don't let nobody judge you. You're just making a couple extra dollars. Instacart, you're just picking up groceries for people, okay, dropping it off, making an extra four, five, six hundred bucks. See, there is no way nowadays that a person could say there's no jobs available. There's no such thing. There's no such thing. Airbnb, learning how to leverage Airbnb. You don't have to own Airbnb. Why don't you lease it for you to yourself and then sublease it? 
Now you're doing what I like to teach a lot of us, controlling the asset. You don't need to own everything because this world got us misconstrued. I need to be a boss. I need to be a boss. I need to own everything. You need to control everything. You don't have to own everything, people. Do you know how much these CEOs, do you know how much these owners of this world make? Do you know how much people, how many people in this world make millions of dollars, thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars controlling? A good example, too, so I can see it in different dynamic. I know a lot of you have watched something called Shark Tank. Do you understand when they give their money what they're doing? They're not owning the company. They're controlling the company. A lot of you don't understand that show is so powerful in many different aspects. They're teaching you how to control, not own. A lot of you are so stuck on this mindset. Oh, I don't have I, I don't have money like you. I don't have credit like you. I don't have the down deposit. You don't need to own everything. You need to learn how to control it. There's times in real estate I've made money controlling a deal. This person about to lose their house. This person want to buy the house that the person losing. Let's put that on paper. Bobby made thirty thousand dollars. I didn't own nothing. I just connected two people on paper. Legally, contractually, we're so stuck in this mindset. We want to own, own what? As long as you can control, hypothetically, I'll give you another example. I'm going to give you a more realistic example. One time somebody called me, oh, Bobby, I need a roof done. I said, I don't do roofs. I'm a consultant, but I consult on different things. That's not my area. Man, you sure you don't got nobody for roofs? Great. You know what? The person pressured me, so I took the pressure. So now I have an uncle who actually does roofs. I, I actually do. I called my uncle. I told him, look, whatever you charge him, put $2,000 on top. And that's exactly what he did. Charge him to do the roof. Let's say the roof was $25,000. He charged him $27,000. I made $2,000 doing nothing. Do you understand? In this world, all you got to do is control. You don't need to own everything. And boom, the person got the roof done. Oh, my God. Thank you, Bobby. You're amazing. Boom, I made $2,000. My, my uncle got his $25,000. Everybody's happy. In this world, learn to control and put yourself in the middle of two people. Brokering deals. The game of life we're not taught as growing up, especially in the black community. We're not taught the importance of brokering, putting yourself in the middle of deals. You could make so much money in this world, but we as people, we get so scared. We get so scared to connect ourselves with people, not understand how much money you can make if you connect yourself with the right people. Imagine you have a person who have a building that they want to sell. And this person is looking for a building. That's what I do for a living. Do you understand if I put myself in the middle of that deal contractually on paper, I'm going to get paid. And I might get an $80,000 check just for connecting the two people. Welcome to commercial real estate. There's nothing hard about this game, people. The hard part is that you don't believe in yourself. The hard part is that you're not exposed to it. So you don't believe it can happen until you see it. There's so many ways to make money more than what I'm talking about here. But I thought I shared these 10 ways on teaching you how to make money because I told you guys the cost of living is very expensive. Behind me on this TV, if you're on the IG, you see they're about to increase interest rates again. Life is very expensive right now, people. You got to wake up and figure out how do I make more money or you struggle. It's up to you. I got to go ahead and start some cooking. I got to bake some Bake some food for my girl. Get her right. You know what I'm saying? When they come in later on. So I got to get going. I love you all. May God bless. Appreciate all the love, all the support. Appreciate everybody that watches my movement, share my lives. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you rewatch it and learn something. Learn 10 different ways that I put together on teaching you how to make money in this world we live today. Mentor me that I college support Bobby. May God bless. Carisha, what's popping? What's popping, everybody? Love you all.